Well, I cleaned up a little bit. And consolidated some shit into the shit department. And decided, well, the main, one of the main reasons was I didn't have any room to prime the mullion. And it was driving me nuts. I didn't do it outside, or couldn't do it outside because it's fucking raining. So, <clears throat> so fuck it. Cleaned up my shit. Except for that dumpster fire on that workbench. It's on the list. Um, <clears throat> so all this was a 2x12, 8 foot 2x12 that I ripped down. half inch strips uh, inch and a half wide or you know two by four or two by twelve then I was just going to leave it but then thought fuck it so I got a round over and put it pretty deep and instead of doing a uh, a Roman OG, which is the side like a quarter inch Roman OG uh, pattern, which is what your what most of your colonial type um, trim is, I decided to just go ahead and do a round over. Put it deep, that way you get, all right, you see this? That way you get that profile. See where it steps in, that staging? So I want, God damn it. <laughs> so anyway, that was the goal, and that's what I accomplished. Let's see that. steps in that's what I wanted I wanted that defined line and for being just your standard chunk of lumber 2 by 12 treated did all right now since it was treated and then brand new it was saturated it was soaked so I uh, cut it down let it sit in the sun for uh, two days. It dried out a little bit. Uh, then I routed it down, let it sit overnight, and it's substantially dry. Well, and I sanded it too, which I think I'm glad I put that extra effort into it because I would be really angry right now if all the all the blade marks, all the saw marks, were running down the the face. And the thing is, nobody's ever going to see it. Nobody's going to know it's there. Nobody's going to give three fucks. Nobody knew. Nobody knows what it looked like before. The only person who's going to know what went into it was me. And I've spent three days doing nothing but making trim. And it turned out very well for being just a stock piece of lumber I was worried the the grain was gonna start splitting and it did a couple places you could you could tell where like on the edging where I was routing and you can see that little ding it's it's not perfect by any means because of the way the grain is it if you catch the right if you catch the right piece it's just gonna it's gonna chunk it away but I'd say 
it was a 90, 90% success. It's going to do everything that I wanted it to do. The only problem is when I run out of these, I don't have any prepped. So I'll know how many once I start demoing the, the edges and scraping the paint and getting that prepped and what repairs I need to make. So I, sh I have everything that I need to do or I have everything I need to do it. I just need the conditions. And this gray primer. Gray primer is good for, uh, for darker colors. And it's, it's sealing. I can't even see the grain, which is, that's tight butthole. So that's pretty cool. Because usually, I mean, I can if you're, if you're looking for it, but it will, it'll soak it right in. That's, that's pretty cool. Because the, the paint that's going to go on it is a flat. And it's blue. It's a good looking blue. I like the blue. And it will, should only be hell two coats should be it pretty tight butthole so the primer <laughs> this is <Zenser. clears throat> one two three i've used it before i've used it i mean that's i've been using it for years I don't remember it being like mashed potatoes. It's like spreading. It's like painting with fucking melted ice cream. It's it's good, but it's workable. It's not like it it, it it's good shit. So I ordered the triple thick, the triple thick coating peel stop you know, whatever for the side because there's a lot of rough surface and a lot of uh, a lot of varying finishes and I wanted to kind of well, I wanted to seal it and if it's thicker than this oh my god I'm gonna need to spread it with a fucking I don't know I'm gonna be able to roll it on to brush it on with a have to brush it on with a goddamn butter knife. But right now I'm just waiting for this primer to cure. It'll probably be two days before I get it up, so that'll be that'll be good before I put the put the final put the blue to it. I'm probably going to take a get a test piece and kind of see if I need to put another coat of the primer on it. I don't believe I should have to, but I'm going to try because it is <laughs> treated. I don't know what it's going to, how it's going to finish, what's going to absorb into it. So I'll do a couple test pieces. I'm not in a hurry anymore. I just got a notice from work that we're off until the 23rd or the 26th. And with updates on the 23rd, which is their way of saying, we'll tell you it's another week next week. Auto manufacturers that we work for or that we supply, most of them are saying they're going to want to be back up and running on the 4th. But until that actually happens, I don't see us going. Plus, there are other restrictions that we may not be allowed to. And in all honesty, the way things are going, they, their jurisdictions and their municipalities and their powers that be may increase their restrictions as well. So <clears throat> instead of the individuals shutting down and, you know, the companies uh they may have their own local restrictions as far as as what they can do 
So I understand they want us to go back and make money and start making parts and assess the damage of the plant sitting for a fucking month. But... I think it's too soon because it's not gone. Still out there. And because we're on the tail end of the curve, the peak is on its way down. Is it really? And what's going to happen when people just go all out willy nilly? The 80% of the people who are not affected now are going to become the next, I don't, I don't know. I'm not an epidemiologist. I'm not a fucking virologist. I'm not a goddamn sociologist. I'm just a fucking dumb electrician. But, no, I'm just, it ain't, it just don't, just don't seem right. Yay, capitalism. Fuck it. So, I'm just going to chill out here, probably catch up on the latest episode of uh, Clone Wars. Ugh, fucking, what's going to happen, dude? I mean, we got a couple episodes left, you know, maybe five or six episodes left. Ahsoka is on her way to Mandalore. And we're going to get the siege of Mandalore. We're going to find how, how Maul loses Mandalore. I know how, I mean, it. it's, but it's, oh my God. So much information and Ahsoka. I can't tell you how much. I, I don't, I can't remember a time in my entire life a situation that I have been so emotionally attached to a character. It's weird. I mean, not, you know, it's not an anime kind of crush. It's a, I am genuinely, genuinely interested in her story and her well-being. And I think it started... I think it started around season two of Clone Wars, maybe. It was when uh, when they went and... I can't remember the name of the planet. When they met the, the father, the uh, son and the daughter. And Ahsoka was kind of... It, it was... There were things. And then... I I realized it when I was watching Rebels and when I realized that Ahsoka was there you know she was fel uh, fulcrum I I don't know I got I got weird I got choked up it was like oh hi and it I can't explain it it's fucking I, I can't explain it. I don't I don't have to explain it, but it's fuck, it's neat as shit. It's good. It's good stuff. I like it. And that was well before all this, you know, needing a distraction thing, but it's it's interesting to see where they take it. Where they take her. And there's been rumors about uh live action Ahsoka on the Mandalorian, which I'm I'm on the fence about. I would like to see it, but I also don't want it to be, I don't want to say ruined, but I don't, I don't want it to be forced. I don't want it to be fake. I don't want it to be something that it isn't. I want it to happen naturally. I want it to happen. I want everything to flow organically like yeah, you know, they were allowed to do with, with Clone Wars and Rebels. It but I also want to see Sabine and Ahsoka finding Ezra. Motherfuck. Ezra is another, and Sabine is another. The whole, that, that trio. I have a, an emotional attachment to Ezra. 
and Sabine. And Hera. I like Hera. Hera's sexy. But... Hello. Just sit out here and chill. Oh, saw marks. Mm -hmm. That's not bad. Not bad. I mean, you got to get way down in there in the light. And this stuff has a. I don't know what the sheen is. It's, it's not even quite satin, I don't think. But <clears throat> the. Uh, the flat will hide that. That's that's pretty good. This I'm in, I'm very impressed with myself, <laughs> my idea to spend eight dollars for a two by twelve, rip it down to you know a dozen or more pieces. I didn't get I didn't quite get uh, what I get 18, 18 pieces. I had a knot and a couple of them split, which I can use majority of it. And there was a couple in edge pieces that didn't, you know, the edge of the two by four or the two by 12, where it was kind of marred up. And I, you know, I had to chew away at that before I got into some good meat and, you know, start a good line. And I used two of the flat pieces and cut them for a drip edge on the side of the house. So that's two. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, forty, forty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, 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 forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, for